we've all heard of fintech and we've all heard of sustainable development, but normally we think of them as quite separate. Now, you said that fintech might be the route to get to sustainable development, but what does that actually mean in practice? After all, isn't sustainable development about things like having access to clean water and using green power and, and so on, things, very concrete things? Yes, indeed, uh, it is. <coughs> so, uh, look, we, you know, we all probably know at least parts of the story of fintech and financial inclusion. So kind of the retail end, in a sense, is a point that's been proven. You know, that you know, digital opportunities open ways in which so-called the unbanked can be banked in multiple ways, whether they be individuals or whether they be small businesses, reducing the cost of due diligence and so on and so forth. I, I think interesting in this conversation, though, is uh, the bigger lumps of money uh, and the capital markets in particular. Uh, we, we heard mention this morning of uh, green and social and many other use of proceeds bonds that are emerging on the market. Clearly, the cost of doing that um, in terms of <clears throat> pre-issue due diligence, in terms of following up and auditing uh, and so on, will all depend on the cost of acquiring the right kind of data in a timely fashion. If you like, that's a, a simple table stakes example. But, but the examples can grow bigger. You know, we have something like, depends on your estimate, one and a half trillion dollars a year in illicit financial flows. That sucks money out of developing countries. It undermines the governance of countries. It reduces the tax base. It makes it far more difficult to even think about long-term investment. You know, digitalization has actually a two-sided effect on that. You know, it can significantly improve the tracking of financial flows. Uh, and help us mitigate some of those illicit financial flows. But of course, it also owns, opens up a whole lot of new avenues uh, in which uh, illicit financial flows can be moved more quickly, perhaps out of the site. How can policymakers, which essentially you're trying to influence, how can they sort of get a handle on this problem and try and ensure that, th that this, this power of fintech is actually used for good and not doesn't actually make things worse? So, so the task force is sort of thinking about this conceptually as a sort of two-humped camel. One is the way in which digitalization helps us overcome barriers to advancing the alignment of sustainability and finance. Uh, and one is the challenge of dealing with new risks that come into play as digitalization takes hold. Then to your point about governance, actually let me just sort of play out the inevitable Libra example. It's sort of like a perfect storm case of, you know, how do you regulate it? Who regulates it? What are you regulating it to do? Um, and is the solution in the realm of central banking and financial regulation, is the solution in trade regulation, is the solution in competition policy? It, you know, wh where are we on this? And I think what's become clear is that, you know, to not put too fine a point on it, we simply don't know. Uh, a couple of weeks ago in talking to one really very reputable central banker uh, from a country in Africa, I asked kind of what's your take on Libra as it comes to town in your country? Uh, and his remark was the kind of political pressures that we're going to come under to accept Libra into our domestic space are so intense, it's not, a, not at all clear that we're going to be able to resist them. We are all here working in the financial markets in one way or another, um, sort of at ground level. Is there anything you think we can do um, or that, that is at all relevant to practitioners to try and steer the use of fintech in, in the service of humanity? Most central banks and most larger financial institutions have one door that says fintech and one door that says sustainable or green finance. Generally, they don't know each other, talk to each other, or think that they should have anything to do with each other. I think the first obvious piece, and we begin to see it in some financial institutions, in some central banks, and in some policy organizations, is to get these folks to talk to each other. 